Poultry and egg production is a vital sector in the food industry. According to an article on Springerlink, the poultry sector might play a vital role in meeting the increasing demand of animal food security, since poultry meat consumption is increasing rapidly due to easy accessibility, reasonable price, and a lack of religious restrictions. Besides, the eggs are a great source of protein for low-income people worldwide and are a common item in daily food menu for all classes of people as well. The primary commercial poultry species include chickens, ducks, turkeys, and geese. The history of domestication of poultry took place approximately 5,400 years ago. It was started long before. People collected eggs from wild and later young birds from hatching were reared. After that, the birds are permanently kept in captivity for rearing. At first, they were used for entertainment purposes, so-called game birds. Then with the realization of their higher utility, they were started to bred according to their ability of fast growth, egg laying count, meat quality and taste, plumage color. Raising chickens can be a rewarding experience, providing fresh eggs, companionship, and even entertainment. But it's also a responsibility that requires thoughtful planning and commitment. Here's a breakdown of the key steps to consider. Before you get chicks, you should learn about different chicken breeds. Their needs, and whether raising chickens is allowed in your area. Check local ordinances and consult animal welfare organizations for guidance. Chickens need a secure coop for roosting and laying eggs, with adequate space and ventilation. Provide a sheltered run for them to exercise and enjoy the outdoors. You'll need feeders, waterers, bedding, nesting boxes, grit, for digestion, and appropriate food based on their age and health. Be prepared to clean the coop regularly, collect eggs daily, and provide care for your feathered friends, even if you travel or get sick. Next is raising chicks notes, you can buy day-old chicks from a hatchery or poultry supplier, or adopt older hens from rescues or individuals. Research reputable sources and choose healthy breeds suited to your climate and goals. Chicks need a warm, draft-free environment with constant light for the first few weeks. Use a brooder box with heat lamp, bedding, and chick starter feed. Monitor their temperature, food, and water levels, and ensure they have ample space to explore and exercise. Be gentle and patient as they grow and learn. Gradually introduce your chicks to the coop and run once they're fully feathered, around 6 weeks. Ensure the coop is predator-proof and accessible at night. When they become adult chickens, you need to provide quality poultry feed based on their age and laying status. Ensure clean water is available at all times. Clean the coop regularly to remove droppings and debris, preventing pest and disease accumulation. Maintain proper ventilation and bedding. Protect your chickens from predators with sturdy fencing and secure coop closures. Be vigilant for signs of illness or injury and seek veterinary help if needed. Gather eggs daily to prevent breakage and encourage continued laying. Store eggs in a cool, dry place for fresh consumption. Designing a chicken processing factory involves various complex considerations ranging from regulatory compliance to efficient workflow. Here are key considerations when operating a chicken processing facility. The location of the broiler slaughterhouse should be in an area with sufficient water sources and convenient transportation. It cannot be built in the downstream of a polluted river. It must have an atmospheric environment suitable for food processing. There should be no dust or harmful gas within 2 kilometers, radioactive materials and other proliferation pollution sources. Determine the process flow of the processing production line according to the processing object and product plan. According to the process route and related requirements of food processing, the factory area is divided into the following functional areas, production area, living area, office area, and subsidiary area. In the planning and design, the overall layout should be followed, with clear areas and no cross-contamination. The daily slaughter capacity determines the single shift productivity, working time. According to an article on National AG Safety Database, Poultry, turkey, duck and chicken, slaughtering and processing plants typically process 20,000 or more birds per day. 
The larger sized broiler processing plants process chickens and other related animals at a high rate of 10,000 on an hourly basis. Which goes to nearly 1 million or more on a weekly basis. The road design of the factory should follow the food hygiene standards, so that the logistics and the flow of people should be separated, and the clean area and the non-clean area should have different passages. The greening of the plant area is an important part of the overall plan. It must fully integrate the natural conditions and environmental pollution of the plant area, have a reasonable layout, and conform to ecological principles, and special consideration must be given to the plant landscape and the principles of learning, and the design must be evergreen throughout the year. The green area of the newly built enterprise plant should reach more than 20%. According to the broiler slaughter technology and the hygiene and safety requirements in the production process. The processing workshop is generally divided into a non-clean area and a clean area. Among them, the pre-slaughter process, slaughter, blood draining, scalding, depilation, feather removal, evisceration, and byproduct treatment are non-clean areas. Pre-cooling, division, and packaging are clean areas. After completing the production process layout and work area division of the workshop, the corresponding living facilities and auxiliary facilities are provided according to the number of personnel in each work area and the nature of the work. Living facilities mainly include reception rooms, lounges, laundry rooms, primary locker rooms, secondary locker rooms, showers, toilets, hand sanitizers, air showers, etc. Auxiliary facilities mainly include laboratory, heat exchange room, electrical control room, machine repair room, material room, chemical storage room, workshop office, etc. Architectural design process requirements for processing workshops The standard height of the net height of the workshop under the shed, for standard workshops, is a large 4.5 to 5.5 meters, a small and medium-sized workshop is 4.5 meters high, and the minimum is 4 meters. High-level small windows are used for the doors and windows of the workshop to avoid direct sunlight on the products. The wall of the car. The roof cargo ceiling should be constructed with non-toxic, light-colored, waterproof, mildew-proof, non-shedding, and easy-to-clean materials. The corners and trenches of the workshop are all curved, and the windowsill in the workshop should be tilted down by 45 degrees, the floor of the workshop should be corrosion-resistant. Non-slip, sturdy, waterproof, no cracks, easy to clean and build with materials. Process requirements for water supply, drainage and steam The water supply capacity is compatible with the production capacity to ensure sufficient processing water. The processing water should meet the national domestic water standards or other requirements. If the self-provided water source is used as processing water, it should be treated effectively and meet the requirements of sanitation license. The processing workshop should be equipped with 82 degrees hot water for disinfection of knives and equipment. The drainage direction of the workshop should flow from the clean area to the non-clean area. The drainage ditch should be covered or uncovered. The drainage slope should be more than 1% to 2%, and the slaughtered parts should be more than 2%. In order to facilitate sewage treatment and waste oil recovery, it is best to have a visceral room. Special pipelines are set up for centralized discharge in the unloading processing room. There should be moderate lighting in the workshop. Because the workshop generally uses artificial lighting, the lighting intensity requirements, inspection posts 540 lux, processing parts 220 lux, pre-cooling, and aisles 110 lux. The light does not change the color of the processed object, and has the functions of waterproof, explosion-proof and dust-proof. The control cabinet shall be made of waterproof and moisture-proof materials as far as possible and set on the wall. The production line runs through different processing rooms and should be equipped with control switches, and chain electric bells should be set for hanging chickens, slaughtering, and feathering. Air conditioning and ventilation process requirements The workshop temperature is controlled within the specified range according to the product process requirements. And pre-cooled. The temperature of the divided parts is below 12 degrees, 
good exhaust and ventilation facilities should be installed in the workshop to ensure that there is no condensation on the ceiling and the ceiling. Skylights should be installed in the steam workshop. Above is about how chicken are raised and processed in factory, so what about chicken eggs? The processing of chicken eggs in a factory involves several steps to ensure the eggs are cleaned, grated, and packaged for distribution. Here is a general overview of how a chicken egg processing factory typically operates. Eggs are collected from commercial egg-laying farms. These farms are equipped with large facilities that house thousands of laying hens. The collected eggs are transported to the processing facility. During transportation, care is taken to minimize jostling and breakage. Upon arrival at the processing facility, the eggs are carefully inspected to remove any visibly damaged or dirty ones. The eggs then go through a cleaning process, which may involve washing and sanitizing. This step is crucial to remove dirt, bacteria, and other contaminants from the eggshell. Candling is a process where the eggs are passed over a light source to check for imperfections such as cracks or blood spots. Eggs with defects are usually removed at this stage. Eggs are graded based on their size, weight, and quality. Grading is typically done by machines that use various sensors to measure these attributes. Eggs are sorted into different categories such as jumbo, extra large, large, medium, and small. Grated eggs are then packaged into cartons or trays. The packaging process is often automated, with machines carefully placing eggs into their designated containers. Each carton is labeled with information such as the expiration date, grade, and any relevant safety or nutritional information. Throughout the processing, there are quality control checks to ensure that the eggs meet industry standards and regulations. This may include periodic checks of egg samples for freshness and safety. Packaged eggs are then stored in refrigerated facilities to maintain their freshness until they are ready to be shipped. The packaged eggs are distributed to retailers, supermarkets, and other outlets for sale to consumers. Proper transportation and storage conditions are maintained to ensure the eggs reach the consumer in optimal condition.